And it's me, Mr. B, with your Monday, June 1st post. Congratulations on making it to the last month of distance learning. Uh, and we're going to continue talking about the Earth's crust this week up until the end of our uh, time with the distance learning. Uh, so now we're going to talk about a little bit more about plate tectonics and some of the ways that they can move that give us different um, features on our planet, as well as different disasters that could happen because of these plate movements. Uh, so just on here now, um, we learned last class that the Earth is a giant puzzle where we tried to fit those uh, plates together and fit those continents back together. Um, and then we learned that they move through a convection current, so that rising of heat and then lowering and the rising of heat pushing apart the, the land and then filling in the gaps with lava. Um, today we're going to discuss how those plates move. So there's three different ways that those plates uh, move and the different names for them and then some of the benefits and the consequences of what happens when those plates move. Um, and then I'll talk about those questions that you have to answer after. So uh, when plates move, they have three different types of movements that can occur. So there's divergent boundaries or divergent movements. There's convergent boundaries or converging movements. And then there's transform boundaries. Uh, as well, when we're talking about plates, there's two different types. There's oceanic plates, which carry the ocean on top of them. And then there's continental plates where uh, the... Where the continents are on top of them or the land masses are on top of these plates. The other definition or the word that we're going to use that we don't have yet is subduction. And so that's where one plate will travel underneath another plate. So if they're coming together like this, one is going to go underneath and one will go over top. And that's what subduction is. It's going un a plate going underneath another one. So when we're talking about divergent or diverging boundaries, these are where the plates are sliding away from each other. So they're moving apart from each other. Uh, an example of this is the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, otherwise known as the Marianas Trench, uh, and it's found on the floor of the Atlantic Ocean. So what happens is when these plates split apart or diverge away, uh, lava comes up between the two plates and then it goes up and then it settles and hardens and creates new land where that gap was created when the plates pulled apart. Uh, this is what is helping our continents move further apart from each other. So it's helping move South America away from Africa. That's the type of uh, boundary that you would need to create new land. Uh, and these types of volcanoes help to form uh, Iceland because you can find uh, volcanoes at this type of boundary as well when the lava is shooting up between the two gaps. Our next type is convergent or converging boundaries, uh, and this is where the plates are moving towards each other and colliding, essentially, as they're coming together and they are colliding. Um, they don't move a lot, they only move like a few centimeters every year, but we still feel the effects of their collision. So the two types of converging boundaries that can meet are an oceanic plate and a continental plate. Uh, trenches get formed here, earthquakes and mountains can also form at this type of boundary. And in Canada, we might see this type of mountain along our west coast, like where we have the uh, Rocky Mountains. Those were created by um, converging plates, uh, oceanic and continental plates. Uh, the other type that we have here are the, uh, mount are the continental to continental collisions. Uh, and there is a mountain range. This is where how the Alps were created. The Alps were created by a uh, continental plate, two continental plates hitting each other. Uh, the final type of boundary that we have are transform boundaries, and this is where the plates are just sliding past each other uh, to get to a new spot. Uh, so, but because they aren't smooth surfaces, they're essentially rocks, uh, the sliding doesn't happen smoothly. And this is where you get earthquakes. So when plates are trying to slide past each other, uh, that's what's going to form and cause an earthquake. Uh, these type of movements can be seen along the west coast of Canada. So again, in BC, uh, as well as the United States, you know, that California often gets a lot of earthquakes. Uh, and so this is the reason why it's because they're right along the edge of two, uh, boundaries and they are trying to slide past each other, move up and down alongside each other. Uh, so that's all the information that you will need. Uh, and then, so if you want to see how these plates are moving or where they are and how they are in action, you can follow this link and it will take you to the website uh, that will give you more information on that. And then the last thing that you have to do is on page 247 of the textbook, uh, there are some questions which I have uh, given to you here. 
And so question one is most plate boundaries are underwater, but some can be seen on land in different parts of the world. Uh, what kind of boundary is shown in each photo below? Describe what is happening here. So the two photos that you have are this one. This is the San Andreas fault line in uh, the United States. Uh, so what type of plate movement would, do you think this one is? Is it, a, is it a transform boundary? Is it a convergent boundary? Or is it a divergent boundary? Uh, the word fault uh, kind of helps you out here. So you can see there's a bit of a gap here or a space. Uh, and then the last one here is Iceland is growing wider because it sits on top of a plate boundary. So if it's if Iceland is getting wider, what type of plate movement would cause it to get wider? Is that a divergent, a convergent, or a transform boundary? Uh, and then for question two, the city in the photo above is in Iceland. All of the buildings in the community are heated by naturally hot water that comes from deep below the Earth's surface. Why do you think this water is so hot? So what would cause the increase in water temperature? Think back to our a couple lessons ago where we were talking about what's causing those plates to expand and spread out. Um, is there any connection between the volcanoes in Iceland and the hot water? If so, what is that connection? And then what do the volcanoes and this hot water tell us about Earth's interior? It probably tells us that it might have a different temperature than our regular surface, but does that mean that the Earth's interior is hotter, colder, stuff like that. Um, I will be back again on Wednesday, you guys. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out and you guys have a good, uh, have a good day.